three. So we have a perch here, and it belongs to Sapphilum phylum cordata, Sapphilum vertebra, super class Gnathus tomata, which um, fish that has um, two jaws, unlike a lamprey, um, who doesn't have a jaws. Class Actina pterygii, um, which are ray bone fish. And genus Perca? Perch? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with uh, Guild and Capricorn. <laughs> The respiratory system of the perch consists of the gills and the opercolum. The opercolum is a hard flap of skin that protects the gills from the outside environment. And also, by moving the opercolum, the fish can move oxygen and water without swimming. Uh, the water can either go through the mouth or straight to the gills. And the gill filaments have a feathered texture that increases the surface area for oxygen absorption. Uh, which is then transported through the gills into the body by a series of cap small capillaries. The swim bladder is a, this white organ that is a gaseous pocket that maintains neutral buoyancy using the gas gland and the oval body. It takes in or expels gas to counteract gravity and allow fish to hover in water. <laughs> the pectoral fin, this is the pelvic fin, and this is the anal fin. They all help with providing stability in water and help helping the fish maintain orientation. This is the caudal fin that moves side to side to thrust the fish forward in water to escape from predators and whatnot. This is the Pos second dorsal fin which posterior. is posterior this is the first dorsal fin which is anterior these help maintain stability and maintain orientation in water and can protect the fish from being swallowed by fish from behind because of the angle of the fins and the sharpness of the edges so perches have tenoid scales named for the tinnae that make up the scales of the fish. To clarify, which are tinnoid scales are sharp tooth scales that are the most common scales on ray finned fishes. Other types of scales can be observed on other fishes like placoid scales on sharks. Counter shading of the perch and other fish allow it to either blend in with the darkness of the of the water they're in when they're at a certain depth or blend in with the above environment if they're more towards the uh, light of the top of the water. Uh, perch has complete digestive system. Uh, it's called an alimentary canal. It consists of an entryway mouth and an exit way, the anus, right here. Um, allows the continued digestion of food. Mouth leads into esophagus. We open the mouth and try to push this in. It should take us there. esophagus right here. It leads to stomach. Stomach contains acidic gastric juices. It breaks down, stores and breaks down the food. Um, some absorption is going on here as well. Stomach leads uh, to intestine. Uh, the majority of absorption is going on here and it starts with a small intestine and it turns into a large intestine, which leads uh, to an anus right here. Mm. 
can see Sika projections right here. They also help digestion. They secrete enzymes that are being expelled into our stomach. Here we can see spleen, it's a dark, slender extension between the stomach and the intestines. Uh, spleen is a part of a macrophage, macro, macrophage system. It digests foreign and dead cells um, in the process called phagocytosis. It also recycles red blood cells by removing the iron. It's also responsible for immune response and it produces T cells and uh, beta cells. Here we can see a liver. The liver is a very important part of every animal. It's a digestive gland as well. It's, um, it metabolizes uh, carbohydrates and fats to produce bile that expels into small intestine and neutralize stomach acidic stomach juices. Um, bile is very alkaline. It helps to emulsify fats in small intestine. The gallbladder is located under the right lobe of the liver, which is next to the stomach, gland that contains bile. Um, the bile um, is secreted by the liver and is stored in this bladder. So we're opening the stomach now to see what's inside. I think I haven't had a meal for a while because it looks completely empty. Let's look in the intestine. Hmm. There's a little shell. It's a mollusk. Bivalve. <laughs> Lots of shells here too. Yeah, it's all at eight. <laughs> the kidney is the dark region right here that runs alongside the spinal cord. It removes nitrogenous waste and leads to the urinary bladder, which releases out detrimental waste through the urogenital pore. Very important organ in fish is the lateral line, it's actually, system. Um, and it um, sends the temperature and pressure change and um, can sense a current. And if you've ever seen a shoal swimming, that's what allows fish to be so synchronized in their swimming. They feel each other's movements, they feel the current, and they quickly change the direction. It also tells fish it doesn't go too far, too deep, because if it goes too deep, it's swimming, swimming, what is it, swimming bladder? Yeah, swimming bladder can rupture because the pressure is too high. So with a lateral line, the fish senses the high pressure and it stays closer to the surface, doesn't go as deep. Um, another sensory organ is an eye and it sends a visual signal is sent to a brain where it's been processed. Mm, you can also see nostrils here. There. Um, nostrils can detect can detect smell in water. The nerves lead to um, olfactory bulb in the brain where the signal has been processed. The brain is somewhere here, right here. We couldn't open it. It's too hard. And the um, scalpel doesn't do it. 
Nope. <laughs> no, we don't have to. The brain We're gonna is use the model. right above here. We're going to use our trap model. Let's start with the biggest part. This one, midbrain. Mm. It's also called uh, mesencephalon. And it is responsible for visual um, function. The signal from eyes go to here and being processed. And these are called optic lobes, two of them. Mm. This part, uh, the forebrain, consists of um, palencephalon and it is responsible for motor coordination and sensory um, functions. The information from fish nostrils uh, for chemical detection and processing comes also in here and being processed. Look at this part. Um, this part. And this yellow part is um, diencephalon. It is responsible for hormone signaling and uh, visceral activities, which are involuntary muscle control. Mm. Okay, which part? Um, this white. Part. My um, myelencephalon contains uh, consists of um, medulla oblongata, which is responsible for autonomic functions such as um, respiration, swallowing reflex, heart rate, things like that. Um, which I haven't talked about. This one is a um, metencephalon responsible for balance, mo motor control, and muscle. That's it. Muscle. So this is the heart which is found behind the pericardial cavity. The heart is two-chambered, made up of a ventricle and an atrium. As you can see here, Blood is pumped out of the ventricle to be oxygenated by the gills. This blood then goes on to nourish the rest of the body. The cycle continues after deoxygenated blood returns to the heart. So these are the gonads of the perch. This one is a male because it has two uh, testes, or two testes. Um, these produce sperm that would be released um, through the urogenital opening, um, where they can externally fertilize um, eggs from a female. So this is a female fish because um, or rather perch, it has one gonad, and that's the ovary. So the ovary produces uh, female gametes, which are ova, eggs, and the eggs can be released out through the urogenital opening. Uh, they can lay up to 23,000 eggs. So that's pretty cool.